keep the file checked out to me like I'm going to come back and work on it later or I can check it in. Here's another version I'm done working on it and allow somebody else to work on it. Or I can just discard my changes if I don't, if I decided I didn't want to go ahead and do any of that stuff. And when I check in the file, it asks for some comments about this version so I can record what I did to it, a brief summary of that, uh, so I can look back in the history and see what was done to the document. Okay. And then, okay, let's go back to our site here. Okay, and then we can see document history doesn't have a little green arrow, means it's checked in. Let's drop down the menu here and let's take a look at version history. So there's lots of different versions of this document in here. Um, started with a uh, 0.1 version. There's the initial version. Um, um, major version 1.0. Here's all the different comments that were made. And I can go back in and open that document. So if I want to open the very first version that was in here, I can go back and look at it and see the content's very different. That was what was originally in the document. But SharePoint saves all that for me. So I can go back and look at any of the old versions that there are. And now you'll see one of the things it has here, 2.0, this is the current published major version. But you'll see 2.1, that was the version I just edited right now. I've turned on uh, major and minor versions, in, uh, and this works with uh, a content approval as well. Um, the, 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 the version that most people are going to see is the 2.0 version. That's the major version. While I'm working on minor versions, they're not, until I say it's official, it... Um, it, it doesn't show up for everybody else. Let's see. Let's go back to our document library documents with history. And I can publish it as a major version. Okay, now and I can add more comments. And that should be version 3.0. If I go back and look at my version history, see, now I've got a new that's the version that everybody's going to see. Okay? And you can set all kinds of parameters on how many old versions you want it to keep and drafts you want it to keep, things like that. One of the things that I don't have turned on here is uh, approval for the documents. You can set an option for your library that requires uh, approval before a major version of the document is published is available to everybody else. Um, and you can set up so to e email you, know, you or whomever saying, hey, you need to approve, review and approve this document. Um, so lots of, lots of fancy features like that so you can work together on major documents. And of course, you, you don't have to use those features if you don't want to. You can use it just like a standard network share, really, just plopping documents wherever you want to, if you want. And then, of course, it's, it's powerful, too. It gives you lots of uh, fancy permissions. Excuse me. Uh, lots of, you can set permissions on uh, your document library for anybody, different people to view it in different ways. You can set permissions on the folder level as well as on the document level, just like you can you know, with uh, NTFS shares. So it's really powerful permi permissions there as well. Um, Let's see, some of the other things that I haven't really shown you, of course, anything that you put in the document library, of course, is, uh, is searchable through the search center if you want it to be. Um, a feature that I can't show you here is uh, if you have uh, Microsoft Office 2007, um, you can actually synchronize your documents with Outlook. Uh, there would be an Outlook, little synchronize with Outlook menu here. They would create a folder in Outlook. Um, that you could, that would create copies of your documents in that folder. And then you could go offline, disconnected from the network, edit your documents while you're disconnected, and then connect to the network, and Outlook will synchronize those changes back up to the SharePoint site. Pretty powerful. There's a lot of powerful stuff like that, um, integration with Outlook, some of which requires the newer version of Microsoft Office. We only have Office 2003, so I can't show you all of those fancy features. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at document workspaces real quick. Um, a document, a, like we see, a document library holds lots of different documents. Uh, but if you have a really, a really important document that requires lots of different work, like, uh, like a grant application or an annual report, major projects like that, you may want to create kind of a, a subsite just for it, um, which SharePoint calls document workspaces. And really, this this gives you some of the other features uh, that we're going to look at, kind of oriented around, oriented around that just that one document, or uh, just a couple of documents, like. Um, and we won't look at this too in depth, um, but you can see you have a, a document library here. You can include like that major document you're working on. Then you have tasks related to just that document that you need to parse, parcel out. And, you know, you know, certain person is doing this section, other person is doing that section. You can assign their tasks and things. So you've got stuff oriented just around that one document. So a lot of that work on that project, you know, doesn't clutter up the main stuff on the main site that we're going to look at. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at some of our other features here. Uh, you can have a picture library, similar to a document library, it just stores pictures. 
and it's got all the standard features we've seen so far. Uh, you can upload, you can upload pictures. Um, there's diff you can view the pictures in different ways. I haven't set up any fancy views here. Oopsie. Let's go back. Um, of course, you can get alerts on your picture library. There's RSS. You can set it up with versions and checkout and approval, just like we saw with the uh, the document library. Uh, and of course, it's searchable um, for any of the attributes you've associated with it. And, um, let's see. A couple of the interesting uh, options you have here is you can view the pictures as a slideshow. Let me go through our pictures there. It's just a nice, neat little feature there. Um, and you can also, uh, let's see. Oh, let's see, select a picture, and if we do send to, it gives me some neat little options integrated with Microsoft Office. Well, it was working for me yesterday. I don't know why it's not working for me today. And that's unfortunately one of the things you'll find with SharePoint. Some of the integration features with Office can be a little flaky sometimes. Um, that's why I do wish we had the, the newer version of Office 2007 uh, is integrated a little bit better with SharePoint. So. But unfortunately, we don't, we're not moving up to that yet, so there's a couple of little flaky things like that. But uh, let's go into some of our other features. We'll try to look quick at uh, contacts. You can create a contacts database in SharePoint if you have some people that your team contacts frequently, like I've got some, uh, the Summit County Clerk of Courts or the Mahoney County Bar Association president. Um, you've got all the standard features that you've seen in SharePoint so far for your contacts. You can get an alerts on the contacts or view them as an RSS feed. We can view them in different ways. I don't have any views set up here like we saw in the staff directory. The staff directory was a really fancy customized context database. Um, we can, in, and as you saw, like I heavily customized that. We can add any types of fields we want into here. And what I've got here is just the default context, but I can add more stuff in here. Like if I wanted to add a county field so I knew which, you know, I could easily sort by counties for my bar associations, something like that. Um, this one for two thousand Office Outlook 2003, it does, it should work with connecting with Outlook. If you connect to Outlook, let's see, it'll add this folder to my Outlook contacts list. If I switch over to Outlook, you'll see there's my example team contacts. Now they're, they're read only here, I believe, yeah. So I can't change it through Outlook, but I can, I have to go to the SharePoint site to change it. But I can see what I've got. Okay, let's go back to our site here. Um, we'll show you a couple of the other things. You, we've seen these in a lot of other sites, uh, a lot of other lists. There's a couple of cool features we'll show you with contacts. As I can use edit in data sheet, basically turns, turns all my data kind of into um, an access data sheet. It looks a lot like a spreadsheet. You can go to all the little cells individually. And they're all editable right there while you're in them. And that's pretty cool. And then I can switch back to standard view and all those changes. It's ch made all those changes right there and all of them all at once. Um, I can also export all of these guys to a spreadsheet. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. Mm, lots of little dialog boxes, but there we go. There's all my data in the spreadsheet. And it kind of sets it up for me with things to, to sort it and stuff like that. So it's really, really cool features like that. Okay. Let's take a look at tasks. Team tasks here. This is tasks similar to you have in Outlook. It's got all the standard features, you know, alerting and RSS, uh, different views that you can use. Um, you can create a new task. You can assign it to someone. Um, this can be anyone that you've got in your SharePoint system or in your Active Directory. Um, and I'll send them an email uh, when you assign a task to them. You can view your, t there's different views it has set up um, by who the tasks are assigned to, so you can see who's supposed to be doing what. Um, you can view your tasks uh, using kind of, um, let's see, I don't have any of them set up with due dates. You can set it up with a calendar, so you can see when the tasks are due or assigned. There's a calendar of tasks. Uh, if you like Gantt charts, I've also said you can set it up with a view for Gantt charts, which kind of shows you kind of a little timeline.